I am Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And with me in the chair today is Mary M. Bennett. Now she is the director of the Men's and Women's Anger Management Program and she is back again with us. Welcome, Mary. Thank you, Ramona. It's good to be here again. Oh, it's great to have you yeah. back in the chair. Now, let's get to the skinny. Mm -hmm. Anger. Yeah. Anger. Yeah. What is it? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, it's an emotion. It's a feeling. And it's a very complicated feeling. We're never just angry. I, I think it would be almost impossible to be just angry. We're always angry because, because we have all of these other feelings. And it's usually these very vulnerable feelings, like sadness and maybe worthlessness and loneliness that get triggered when we are um, upset and angry. What we're really talking about is, is that something else starts to occur and I think it has a lot to do with our earlier experiences and that we are merged with this part of ourselves when we're angry enough to cross the line. That we are taking on this more sensitive part of ourselves that's had other experiences that were traumatizing perhaps, that had to do with childhood, or it might have something to do, it could be something that happened last week you know, uh, that was upsetting, mm -hmm. that is coloring the moment. So part of our job is to be able to reflect and to really notice what is going on behind our anger. But we tend not to do that for a lot of reasons. And some of those reasons have to do with culture. You know, some of those reasons have to do with what we saw in our family and the way that people manage anger. And some of that has to do with maybe our religious understanding um, and uh, so there are a lot of things that affect our thinking and this is a very important part of what we do is help people notice that it really is our thoughts that are causing us to feel these feelings that are behind our anger. So does that mean that like from a really wide perspective <laughs> No one can really make you angry. Aha! Uh -huh. You remember that because we were here before talking about this. That is absolutely true. It really is our own thoughts. That doesn't mean that somebody can't be scary and uh, that most people would perceive that as being a scary incident, you know. Um, but it is our own perceptions. And that the point and what we're, I'd like to focus on here today is noticing these kind of distortions that we have in our thinking when we're angry enough to cross the line. We are not thinking rationally. And that is a very important part of this work. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about internal work here that we're really going to be able to stop. You now we talk about stop and think, but we're, we're going to do more than that. We're going to do more than stop and think. We're going to be able to look at what our thoughts are and notice, am I thinking rationally? Another way to put that is, is what I'm thinking, is it true? The skill here is not to act out with verbal or physical aggression, that we're making the connection between mature adult behavior that we're noticing that when we're angry enough to be over the line, that we're not thinking like that mature adult. Mm -hmm. We're thinking like that younger self. Might have been the self last week. It might have been, you know, trauma from a childhood, and or, or things that we learned uh, about how to. Um, there, our thoughts come from someplace, mm -hmm. and I think the example of racism, sexism, ageism. But let's take racism, for example. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that um, black people were hanging from trees. You know, that, uh, that kind of group thinking, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, that allows us to do things to one another. And uh, mm -hmm. that we, from this distance in time, can see that was really awful. It was a justification well, for it to dehumanize somebody so that you could get mm -hmm, whatever result mm -hmm. that you were looking for. Exactly. Or whatever. Right, right. <laughs> well, I'm sure there were many things. Right. And I think in every act of anger, and I'm talking about, you know, with the, the verbal and physical aggression, uh, although there is such a thing as cool anger too, because we certainly can act with vengeance in this very cool and calculated way. Mm -hmm. But the, this way of seeing the other as something, there's this disconnect between ourselves and the other person, mm -hmm. that we're placing ourselves here and somebody else there. That is uh, 
part of uh, what we do when we are uh, upset, does, oftentimes. Does disconnecting ever have a positive purpose? Well, that's an interesting question. Does it, it certainly does, I think, in, in the case of trauma, you know, because it allows us to survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to disconnect from that uh, experience, uh, disassociate from that experience. Okay. And, but there's a danger in disconnecting from our feelings. And I think we do that oftentimes, people that have issues with anger in particular. About, um, and part of what we need to do is make a distinction between the feeling and the thought. Okay. So that's part of what we can do with this exercise that we're going to do right now. Awesome. Okay. 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 Um, my wind children. Okay. Don't do their chores. Uh huh. Ah, I I can become angry. Okay. How old are the kids? I well, actually, there's only one. Okay. Okay, and it's uh, sixteen. Uh huh. So we have a system. Mm -hmm. I have a system. Mm -hmm. A note on the refrigerator uh -huh. every day. Uh -huh. You know, instead of having to do all your chores at once, uh -huh. it was kind of decided that if you did one every day, you uh -huh. could break it down. Mm -hmm. it doesn't always work that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm flexible. I don't mind if it all gets done in one day. But what happens is, is that even though it's on the refrigerator, and you see the refrigerator every day when you walk in, mm -hmm. and it's on the bulletin board in uh -huh. my child's room, uh -huh. okay, what? Huh? <laughs> I forgot. Right. Uh -huh. You know? Uh, so it's like, mm -hmm. you know, and I can tell my child, mm -hmm. you need to go do your things, and they will do them. Uh huh. But why do I have to keep telling them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it so hard to remember in an entire week that one day a week you have to do four things? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I can tell already that you're expressing some feelings of frustration and agitation, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I can guess at those things. Now, uh, and th that is like what I'd like to do with this exercise. So we call this a, um, uh, a self-regulation exercise. So say you really got cooking with this and you really got upset. You know, well, you know, you know, well, after a month, then it's not done. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm upset. I'm like, you know, because I'm going to have to go do uh -huh. it, and I really don't want to do okay. it. Okay. Okay. This is a great event. Then. So okay. you know, so now I'm doing the chore, uh -huh. and but when I do the chore, I will say, I will say that when I do do it, I do not do it angrily. I do not say, I can't stand the fact that he's not doing this, so now I have to do it. Okay. I don't say okay. that. Okay. Uh -huh. Because I feel that in saying that while I'm doing it, mm -hmm. it will permeate the activity and hold the energy in that space. It's just my personal belief system. Okay. Okay. okay? Uh -huh. To be angry so mm -hmm. that everybody that comes through the front door is mm -hmm. now going to feel my unbalanced anger mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in regarding to this issue. Well, that's very interesting. I hear people say that about their cooking and other things, you know, that don't they Don't cook wanna, angry, don't yeah, drive right, angry. Right, 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 right. <laughs> somehow it gets into the food and it gets so into I won't, the So I'll do it with love, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and say yeah. this needs to be done and this yeah. is all part of the process. Yeah. However, you know, I feel that as a parent it is important for me to teach my child mm -hmm. Living with other people mm -hmm. Very and important. being responsible Very important. for your environment. Okay, so the first thing um, that I want to do here is, is um, make it clear what distorted irrational thinking is so that we sure. have an idea of how to break this down and look at this event. And uh, maybe there's one specific time that you can recall, but you said this, this is a regular occurring things. So that mm -hmm. can work too. Usually the more specific you get, the easier it is. You'll mm -hmm. notice with a, a lot of things in our lives, we can have one event, but there may be different, you know, the before things get really cooking mm -hmm. and then then there's the blowout and mm -hmm. then there's the after effect mm -hmm. and how we felt afterwards. Mm -hmm. So picking one phase of things can be uh, very important too when you're deconstructing something like this and trying to figure out what is going on with yourself. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are the ones that are getting upset. Right. So the focus is here. It's very easy to focus on your child's behavior or someone else's behavior, mm -hmm. but when we're doing that, we're disempowering ourselves. We want to know, what, we want to be, we're the tool, we're the, we're the person that is in this action. Mm -hmm. And we, particularly with parenting, we certainly don't want to be parenting it's okay to be angry because we use that energy to focus on what it is, like teaching your 
son mm -hmm. the family rules, mm -hmm. your rule, you mm -hmm. know, what you want to teach him. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very important. And you want that honored, mm -hmm. you know. So there are things that you need in the process. Okay, so distorted thinking. Distorted thinking, and uh, we have this handout that we use in the program, and I've got one for you too. Mm -hmm. So uh, distorted thinking, there's extreme thinking. That's mm -hmm. the first one. Extremism, and then there's various breakdowns of how we can think extreme in an extreme way. So extreme thinking is when we're thinking there's no gray area, it's black and white, mm -hmm. and that can fall into violent extremist thinking. Very, very common to have I want to whack them up the side of the head kind of thought mm -hmm. or some kind of violent thought. Mm -hmm. But we don't usually act on that kind of thinking because we stop and think. Right. So, so we're, we're actually noticing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, in this particular event, that's what I want you and that other people that are mm -hmm. watching this, so mm -hmm. that they'll know how to do it too. Okay. So you can have under extremists is violent extremist thinking. There's all or nothing thinking. So they, these are uh, and there's uh, labeling when we're placing label on others. Mm -hmm. uh, there's overgeneralization and negativism. These are different ways that all fall under that extreme kind of thinking mm -hmm. category. The second one is making false assumptions. Ooh, I, yeah, think, I know about that. Ah, well, they should right. be able to read your mind, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that would be a false assumption. Okay, so because people can't fortune tell and they can't mind read. Right. So um, we think we know what other people are thinking. No, we can only make a guess. And we can make a very good guess sometimes. Yeah, that's you know. true. But it is a guess. We yeah. can't know for sure. Mm -hmm. And same thing with fortune telling. We don't know what's going on in, uh, in the future. We don't know re really. Even though somebody might have missed your anniversary, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, you say, oh, they're not going to remember again. And you're just convinced yourself. It's, that's your distortion in your thinking. You know, okay. you don't know what they're going to do. Right. Okay. And as we're going through this, you know, to ask yourself, what do I do? And it sounds like that one triggered, oh, maybe I do that. Exaggeration is also a form of uh, false assumption, too. Now, the third way that we can think of rationally is emotional reasoning. And emotional reasoning, that's when we're just coloring everything. All our perception is based upon our hurt and our pain. You know, it's okay. just this category where you would just, I just feel so unlovable, and, and we just assume that we are, uh, for okay. example. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that would be emotional reasoning. And the other one I have to watch out for is should sabotage. I know that that's something that I have to watch out for. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we're shoulding ourselves, you know. Oh, well, like I should you know, have, could have, I should have. Yeah, 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 okay. right, 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 right. <laughs> and standards and values are important, but when we set the bar too high, mm -hmm. then we mm -hmm. are, well, you know, uh, potentially shooting ourselves in the foot, you know, and it's going to uh, create um, a situation where uh, we're going to, it's not realistic. And yourself, I should have sat down more with him and I'm a bad mother for do you know, if I were, you know, that would be a should sabotage. Oh, oh okay, yeah, all right, right. I understand. So, the, okay. so this applies to how you're thinking. Oh, Not so right. much the situation. This okay. is how you're thinking, that you notice that you do this, that you have these kinds of cognitive distortions. Okay. And this is good because we're struggling with this because that's what everybody does, trying to understand, you know, well, what is distorted thinking? You know, it, we can just, the, the simple rule is, is what I'm thinking true, you know. Okay. But, but it, we need more information than that usually, and that's why we're doing this. Last one is false attributions. And there's some overlap in this, but a false attribution is when we're personalizing, having the tendency to take responsibility for everything under the planet. It's all my fault, you know. And, uh, I shouldn't yeah. <laughs> you know. it, just so, it sounds funny. Yeah, but, well, but we do yeah. do it. Well, that's it's good true. to laugh about this stuff. Otherwise, we'd be, oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. No, that's healthy. And then blaming, blaming everybody else for everything mm -hmm. that is uh, mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, neither one of those is, uh, is true. So there would be a distortion there. And this stuff can be pretty automatic, by the way. Slow, thing down, slow things down, even now, 
I'm mm -hmm. slowing things down as I'm talking about it. Slow mm -hmm. things down and notice okay. what it is that I'm thinking because I'm feeling something. So let's go back to your example. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's your son's name? Jeremy. Jeremy. So Jeremy comes home and he doesn't do his chores. Right. Okay, how does mom feel? What do you know? See if you can come up with four feelings. You mentioned frustration. Yeah, I feel frustrated. Okay. Uh, I feel dutiful to do them. In other words, to do it for him. So okay, I'm going to need to do this for him. Yes. So, uh, so you've already come up with the thought that is behind your feeling of frustration. Right. He doesn't do it. It still has to get done. When we talk about connecting the feeling that we're having, because we really need to know, it really is true, that the feeling mm -hmm. that we're having is coming from something in our head. I, I, so then I basically think it would be that I have to do it if he doesn't do it because it has to get done. Uh-huh. And then I'm frustrated because I have to keep reminding him mm -hmm. because for some reason he can't remember. Okay. That's is there any feeling of disrespect or anything like that that goes no. on? I don't want to put any words in your mouth. No. Okay. So that's not part of what, I don't, what goes on. Because it's not personal. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. That would be uh, quite rational. Okay. So you have this, I'm going to have to do this thought. And mm -hmm. this, is, this is what's generating this feeling of frustration. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do this. And I'm already busy enough. And I'm already busy enough. That's right. So you're really frustrated, yeah. you know, because you're already busy enough. Mm -hmm. And, uh-huh, uh okay, good job. Okay, Thank so you. now we're going to notice, is this thought that you're having, is it true? Is it true that I'm busy enough? Or is, well, you are busy, very busy. That would be a, a true part, but I'm going to have to do this. You know, no. this is going to fall on me kind of thinking is what you've got, okay? No, it, it's, oh, it's a twofold on. thing. It's a twofold thing because it, okay. it, will fall on, okay. it will fall on me. It will fall on me, yes, because I'll either have to do it mm -hmm. or tell him. Mm -hmm. Those are the two ways it's going to fall on me. So d is it going to fall on me if I don't do it? Mm -hmm. No because it just simply won't get done, mm -hmm. and I don't have to do it. I can make a choice to pick up his stuff or not pick it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can leave it there. Mm -hmm, I can leave it there mm -hmm. for six weeks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And I can ignore it. I'm mm -hmm. real good at that, mm -hmm. unless it gets with food, and he doesn't put food in his room, so it's not an issue. <laughs> okay, but if we ratchet it up to food, then we would be okay. having a totally different discussion, because uh -huh. then we would go right to anger, oh. <laughs> okay? Because I don't, I don't deal with bugs. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. But, but okay, so bugs get involved. If bugs then, get involved, now okay. I'm angry. Okay, okay. Okay, now, now we're going to have the riot act. Okay. Okay, because okay. I told you uh -huh. I shouldn't have to keep reminding you, now we have bugs, and it is flowing downstream. That's okay. my famous expression when I'm angry. Okay. It flows downstream. Okay. And if I'm catching it, you're getting it next. I think we got at the real, real thought that's generating the emotion. It flows downstream. downstream. So you hold yourself accountable then? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Now, is that a true statement that you are, the buck stops here with you and that you are, so that might guess, be a I false guess. assumption. It is a false assumption, actually. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Because I'm personalizing it. Ah, I would assume. good. So okay. So if I'm personalizing it, job. It's, I'm making it mm -hmm. more than it needs to be. Uh huh. The issue still exists. Uh -huh. It is a good thing to have done. Okay. But the world will not end if it isn't done. So now you came up with the rational thought. Mm -hmm. So there's this there's this chain of events. There's the vent. There's the feeling. Mm -hmm. And we we could have asked for more feelings, but for the sake of my brain and I since I don't have pencil in here <laughs> I had to do one okay so you got your feeling of frustration and then you got you know it's all gonna flow down mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. you know right. kind of thinking yeah and then you're coming up with noticing that wait a minute I'm doing some personalizing here this is a false assumption yeah. and then you're going to this rational statement with well wait a minute mm -hmm. that's not necessarily true right. and what is your rational response to the situation? Yeah, what, what did you come up with? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, what, it, you, well, well, I I mean, think it, what you came up with it was something that sounded like, I have a lot of choices in how I respond here. Oh, absolutely, I right. always do. Right. You know, so, it, and, and as long as I can pause. And remember that? And remember that. Ex excellent. You know what I mean? Then, there I'm, you go. then I'm like, okay, okay. and uh -huh. then once I do that, but uh -huh. to me that's out of the emotion and into the more rational thought. Yeah. You know. Then my breathing will slow down. Yes. You know, and then I'll say, okay, now 
how do I manage this? Manage is just my word. Uh -huh. So how do I how do I how do I get my message across uh -huh. in a way that will help to perpetuate the best results? Exactly, because now what you've done when you're thinking more powerfully, you remember remember that you have choice. Now you are fully in your adult as a parent, whereas before, with the thought that you when you were thinking less rationally, mm -hmm. you were feeling a little less empowered. Okay. You know? Yeah, obviously. Right. Okay, yeah. that's a very important thing to notice. Now, something else you can do with an exercise like this is rate the feelings. Notice how intensely you feel the way you feel. Okay. And notice how strongly you believe the thought that you're having. Okay. You know, and then when you come up with a more rational response, I can come back and I can say, well, when you're remembering that you have choices, I bet you're not feeling as frustrated. Would that be true? That is very, very true. I have something else. And this brings us to um, uh, the other part. Okay, yeah. this brings us to the other, uh, uh, to kind of wrap things up mm -hmm. here. Because what now what you're talking about is, okay, so you noticed that you were thinking in ways that are rational. What am I going to say? What am I going to do? Yeah. You know, and how am I going to address this? So that he can hear me. And Jeremy did a very good job telling you that the way that I, I'm not going to respond to nagging. Right. You know, in other words, I'm not going to respond to a demand. Right. There yeah. needs to be an, another yeah. way of approaching people, mm -hmm. and that is very important. You know, that we're approaching people that they have a choice. And yeah, how do we do that? <laughs> yeah. How do we do that with our children? You know, so that we are clearly the parent. Now we're talking about a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. That we are the parent. That we are the one that wants to set the example that we are understanding that that is very important for us to be able to do yeah. and um, do what we need to do and still stay connected to them and uh, in this very respectful way. Right. You know, so uh, that involves being assertive and it involves not being passive, not being passive aggressive and mm -hmm. certainly not being verbally or physically aggressive. Aggressive. Right, right. Our program takes 20 weeks. We just did a little snippet you know, yeah. there's a lot of skills it takes to learn how to respond without verbal or physical aggression, to respond in a way that our feelings and needs can get met, and that people around us are going to feel safe and comfortable being around us. Wow. Right. Now, what is the website if someone wants to look up um, maybe some of the terms or some exercises or we do a have, little bit we do more? Have what things is that website? Like that. That it, just Google Anger Management UMass Medical Center and you'll come right to our website. That's great. And well, thank you, Mary, oh. very much. Very, very informative. I look uh, forward to part three because I know that we'll also be doing something exciting that I am Ramona and you've been watching Ramona Interviews. Have a wonderful week.